Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and welcome to your episode of Monday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I'll give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for comes from Jack, and it is, what are your thoughts about allowing Yana's hologram to remain visible after she's done using them, sort of like Alibi? That way, her ability gets a minor buff, that would allow her to cover flanks, hopefully helping to fix her low pick rates. That is a really cool idea. Being able to not only just scout out the room like you normally would, but then when you realize that the coast is clear, instead of just deactivating the gadget and having it disappear, you would allow yourself to then maybe kind of peek a hallway. That way, when you and your teammates are pushing from the other direction, you'll be notified if someone tries to take a shot at it because you'll literally hear the shot go off and then you'll see the hologram disappear. Now, one way that they could try to balance this out so that that it doesn't become too overwhelming. You have like 50 Yana clones all over the place. Like that would probably be a bit too much. And so just make it so that as soon as you activate her gadget once again, the clone that was watching that hallway, and I'm using watching in quotes because it's literally just sitting there. It's not doing anything. Uh, it will then uh, kind of deactivate and then you can run another hologram to where you want. And I think that's just a really cool concept. A lot of the ideas I hear around buffing Yana mainly revolve around making it essentially just like Alibi, where if someone takes a shot at her clone, it's going to ping their location for a short duration. And while I understand why people make this suggestion, because it's essentially just the existing mechanic that we have in the game, it's not really the direction that I want to see in Siege. Having a bunch of operators, and no, I know that's kind of an exaggeration, there's only a few, but adding more characters in this game that have that, that system in place where your location is compromised because you just made a, a a quick decision, I don't really know if that is something that I want to see more of, but that is maybe just me. And so what I like about your idea so much is that it would just make her a bit more versatile without going overboard. She is still mainly going to be used to scout out the building to figure out where defenders are, but it would have this other option to watch your back. This would also allow for defense to kind of catch offense by surprise. If offense is really relying on that Yana to be that early one, warning sign, but if you had a Valkyrie in the room where offense is running around, that Valkyrie could then make the call out, oh yeah, you know, that, uh, that Yana that's watching the corner, yeah, that's actually the fake. The other one is running around doing her own thing, just kind of scoot in there and then catch them with a flank because they're assuming that no one is going to push on in without actually taking out the Yana clone. There could be that kind of dynamic, which I think is kind of cool. Now, the real question is, though, is anything like this even needed? I do agree with you, based off of my personal experience, Yana's pick rate has plummeted. I'm honestly surprised anytime I see someone playing as her. But the last time that Ubisoft released the win rates and pick rates of all the characters, uh, she was exactly where she should have been. She was honestly one of the most balanced operators in the game. Admittedly, though, that was at the beginning of that season, right when she just came out. And so, obviously, her pick rate is going to be high because she's the brand new operator. People want to play the new characters. And so I just have a suspicion that things have dropped. And so just in general, if you can tell, I really like this idea. I don't think it goes overboard. I don't think all of a sudden she's going to be overpowered, but it would be a, a great little improvement to try to make her a little bit more appealing. The next one comes from Kyle, and it is, with the introduction of Malusi, it seems like people are calling for Ash slash Sophia to get an extra charge to get rid of the growing number of gadgets. So I do agree with you that Malusi needs a nerf, but I feel like we're jumping to conclusions here. Yeah, you could give Zofia and Ash more charges, and that would be a direct counter to her, uh, but I feel like that would just make Ash and Zofia overpowered and more necessary than almost every other operator in the game. These are already two of the most popular characters in Siege right now, and so as soon as you just give them even more utility on top of that, you're going to see them almost every single game from here on out. I don't really know if that is the best way of balancing out the game, especially when it comes to Malusi. Now, thankfully, they are going to be nerfing her in the upcoming patch, 
but all this could have been avoided if they just made this change at the start of the season. We were able to play with the new operators for almost a month on the technical test servers, and one of the, the feedback that I heard constantly was that Malusi was too powerful. And while I understand where Ubisoft is probably coming from, the, the TTS player base is only a small subset of the huge player base that is Rainbow Six Siege, and so maybe they were waiting for more stats and more feedback, but the fact that that the patch notes basically day one of this season indicated that they were going to nerf her, but only later kind of made me scratch my head as to why they are actually waiting to make that change. I feel like if they made the reduction in her the radius down from 33%, that would have went a long way and people wouldn't be sidelining her every single ranked game. And so in general, while I understand where you're coming from, I don't think that Ash and Zofia need an upgrade. They're already some of the best operators in the game, and this would just be pushing things over the top. Even if Belusi is still too powerful after this upcoming nerf, I don't think that they need a buff. I think that they just need to look at her specifically and make the appropriate changes. But that is just my two cents. The next question is, I've been seeing you streaming The Last of Us 2, and I was wondering if you think it's worth picking up. It has been getting a lot of mixed reviews. That is a very difficult question to answer. On the one hand, from a technical standpoint, I think that the game is incredible. From the audio, the visuals, to the, the voice acting, everything is fantastically done and everything that you would expect from a high quality AAA video game. I also think gameplay wise, it's a step up from the original. Now admittedly, it does play very similar to The Last of Us 1. You're gonna have to be scavenging for resources the entire time. You have to make sure that every shot counts because you don't have a lot of rounds to work with. Even the UI almost looks identical, but I think they've added in some great new gameplay elements. Not only does the AI feel a lot more organic, which adds to the world building and makes everything feel a lot more realistic, but they've also added in some cool stealth mechanics and also the ability to dodge. Dodge, I think, has to be my favorite new addition and has allowed me to come out of situations I normally would not have any business coming out of if I was playing the original Last of Us. I, like it, I really like that kind of skill and timing element that they included in the game. And so just in general, I thought from a gameplay standpoint, it was a lot of fun and really enjoyable. Now where things get a little hazy though, is when we take a look at the story. Now I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but I can fully understand why people were dissatisfied with the, the story itself and why people really didn't enjoy the game overall because of that. If you're expecting more of the original Last of Us in The Last of Us 2, you're probably gonna be disappointed they definitely take a, a departure. Now, personally, I liked the story. There, there was some pacing issues. I don't think that it was perfect, and I can fully understand why people didn't like it, but I actually liked kind of what they were trying to accomplish. They took some risks, and for me, it paid off, but it may not pay off for everyone. Clearly, it's not gonna pay off for everyone. There are also some characters that make the dumbest decisions. Now, I realize in a world like this, we're in a stressful situation, you're not gonna make the optimal choice every single time, but they kind of take it to the extreme. You, you know that they're making these choices because they're trying to tell a certain narrative and progress the story in a certain way, and that's the reason why they made those choices, and that can kind of take you away from things. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, because everything is so well polished with like gameplay, audio, and the, and the visuals, you do kind of notice those glaring issues when they do occur. And so in general, it's it's hard to say. I personally enjoyed what they created, but it's difficult to give an outright recommendation because I don't know if you're going to enjoy the story. The reason why people liked the original Last of Us so much was because of that story, and I can't just say with a definitive answer that you're gonna like it here. This isn't like a God of War situation where I'm like outright just buy it, play it because it's phenomenal. It, it does have some issues and it may not appeal to everyone. The next question comes from Shane and it is, with the many overpowered operators Siege has had in its life cycle, who would you say was the best of the best in their prime? 
that is a tough question, but I think I would have to go with Blackbeard. I know that when Lion came out, especially if you were in like pro league or in a really competitive sense, working with a five stack, like he was just straight, almost impossible to deal with. Ella, when she was released, like she was insane as well. But at least with those characters, you could actually take them out. Having an 800 HP shield pretty much made him this immortal god-like character where there was nothing that you could do about it. If he was on the outside of a window, he could just sit there the entire game, your teammates could then repel in, he has the foothold, they could plant the objective with the safety of him just knowing that he can take anyone out and there's nothing there's nothing that they can do to stop him and then you just win. The amount of frustration when Blackbeard came out was, uh, was incredible. Like, I think a lot of people just forget how insane he was back then and so I think uh, for that reason I would have to go with him for being probably the most overpowered character ever introduced. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's episode of Monday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Have you enjoyed Last of Us? Do you think that Yana needs improving? Give me your guys' thoughts down below. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.